raise your hand if you're ready to see some animals. Raise your hand if you're scared of animals. <laughs> some, there's always an animal somebody's scared of. Now my name is Josh and I am from a company called Animology and we travel 10 states and do wildlife education programs. So all of my animals have been to libraries and schools and Girl Scout groups and Boy Scout groups and vacation Bible schools, so they're all harmless animals. They know this is their job. They travel, they get in the car, they drive for hours and hours and hours, and I get them out for five minutes, they get back in the car, drive for hours and hours again. So as I'm doing this program though, since I do have live animals, I have to go over a few simple rules. First rule, I need everyone to stay seated. Some of my animals can get nervous if there's a lot of movement around them. So if they get nervous, they get sick. And if they get sick, I gotta put them up and then they gotta go to the vet and get shots. And who likes shots? Not very many people, the animals don't either. So, <laughs> now, second rule says, shh, 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 shh. there's a lot more of you than there are of me. So the second rule says we need to keep our ears open. And in order to keep your ears open, you have to do something with your mouth. You have to turn it off. Because if you're talking, you can't listen. And if you can't listen, you can't learn. And even though we're not in school right now, we still have to learn. Because if you don't learn anything, the library doesn't have me back. You don't get to see more animals. Third rule says, I know you're going to have questions. We save all the questions till the very end of the program. That'll give you a little more time to stick around and talk to me if you want but I'm going to be asking questions. If I ask a question you have an answer, how do you answer that question? Raise your hand, very good. Now, raise your hand if you're ready to learn something. Bigger question, raise your hand if you're ready to have some fun. Now, I am the company's reptile guy. I'm the creepy crawly guy. If it creep somebody out, freak somebody out, I will probably play with it. I probably have played with it. I've got an eight inch long centipede in my house right now. The boss says it's yours, don't ever bring it to my house anymore. <laughs> so we're going to start with a little creepy crawly. And I will be walking around so you will see all these animals. This guy it's called a whip scorpion. <laughs> now, I know when I get out cool animals, everybody wants to start talking and ooh and on, but we got to try to keep it down a little bit, okay? This whip scorpion is an arachnid, so he's related to spiders. If he's related to spiders, how many legs does he have? Eight legs. But if you look at him, it looks like he only has six legs and two antennae up front. Those antennae are actually legs. They've been modified. <laughs> she wants it. They've been modified to use as antenna because they're almost blind. They've got very tiny eyes right up on top of their head, so they can't see what they're doing. Now, he's called a whip scorpion because he has this little tail that's really hard to see coming off instead of the pointy tail that stings people, this scorpion sprays an acid out of his tail to keep predators away. So who here has ever smelt vinegar? Raise your hand if you know what vinegar smells like. It stinks, right? I'm drawing a blank on the acid in vinegar right now. The acid that's in vinegar, this scorpion uses as a defense. Only vinegar is like a five to 7% acid this is like a 70 to 80 percent acid. So if he sprays, it stinks really bad. Your eyes water, your nose runs, you cough. So if you're a predator and you're trying to eat him and all this stuff's going on in your face, you can't see him, you can't smell him, you can't taste him. So that's what he uses to get away from his, from his prey, from his predator. Do you think he's ever sprayed me? No. He has. When I'm putting him back in his cage, if he doesn't get out, he gets a little angry sometimes. If he, does, if he won't get off my hand, he gets a little angry and his little tail starts going like this. And then I start sneezing and itching. And Where's he indigenous to you? Or where is he from? He is from, this one is from Vietnam. It's a Vietnamese uh, whip scorpion. Do we have whip scorpions in the United States? No. 
We do, they're called tailless whip scorpions though. They don't even have this tail. Well, let me see. <laughs> so, he's little and small. I'm going to put him up. A little hard to see. Not very active. He is big. That's as big as they get. Now, shh, shh, shh. Just, just a minute. As I go along, my cages get bigger. As my cages get bigger, the animals get bigger. Shh, shh. If you think you're scared, know what you're scared of. Raise your hand if you think this is a snake. If you have your hand up, you are incorrect. This is a lizard. This is a European legless lizard. Now, in the United States, we have lizards called glass lizards that look a lot like this. They just don't get this large. And they actually find, are found in Middle Tennessee. But they're lizards that don't have any legs. So raise your hand if you can tell me how I know this is a lizard. I'll give you a hint, though. The first person to answer this is usually wrong. How do I know this is a lizard? Close. She said snakes only have one spine. This guy only has one spine. But lizards have two things that we have that snakes don't have. What do you think? Shape of the head, maybe. It's on the head. No. What do you think? Lizard. <laughs> lizard skin. They do have lizard skin and not snake skin. Um, snakes uh, stick their tongue out so that they can smell. We'll talk about the tongue in a minute. I've got a lizard that does that same thing. If you look at his head, he's got two things on his head that we have that snakes don't have. Hair. How do you know what I'm saying? How do you know what I'm saying? What do you use? What are these? Ears. ears. Lizards have ears. He's got a little hole in the side of his head that's his ears. Do you all have holes inside of your head? No? You do? You just don't use them all the time. I can say that because I've got three teenage boys. If I have them take out the trash, they don't hear me. If I tell them to walk the dogs or feed the dogs, they don't hear me. When I say dinner's ready, they heard me before I said dinner. So lizards have ears just like we do. They can hear what we're saying. Snakes do not have ears. So if you see a snake, should you go, hey, Mr. Snake, move. Not going to hear you. How do you scare a snake? How do you make a snake leave? Hey, lizard, move. You could do that to a lizard. How do you, how do you make a snake leave? How, how, does, how does a snake hear? Don't step on it. Shh, shh, shh. Just a minute. Just a minute. Every program I do, someone says, step on it, or hit it with a stick, or kill it. If you're going to get bit by a snake, it's going to happen when, one, you're trying to kill it, or two, you're trying to hit it with a stick and make it go away. That's the number two reasons people get bit by snakes. So if you want to make a snake go away, don't go near it. Stomp your ground. Stomp your feet on the ground. Snakes hear different than we do. We hear vibrations going through the air. What about the ground? Snakes hear vibrations going on the ground. They use their belly as their ears. So this guy has ears like us. I can't put him on the ground. He is very fast. And I have a lot of people leave faster than he would move, I think. <laughs> now, now, just a minute, just a minute. Now he has something else that we have. When you go to sleep, what do you do? You breathe, you have to do something else to go to sleep. What are these? You close your eyes. Lizards have eyelids. If you watch, he blinks. Snakes do not have eyelids. Do not have a staring contest with a snake. You will lose because he never blinks. 
He never closes his eyes. He can't close his eyes. Lizards can. So when this guy's asleep, I know he's asleep. He's got his eyes closed. So if you're in the woods and something crawls up and he sticks his head out from underneath a log and he looks at you and he blinks, is it a snake or a lizard? lizard. It's a lizard. Very good. Now this guy is from Europe. He has the largest species of legless lizard in the world. And if you look at his head, he looks, if you'll sit up here, he doesn't cooperate at all. His head looks like a velociraptor from Jurassic Park, Jurassic World. He's got that real pointy nose, the big nostrils, the beady eyes. But from there back, he looks like a worm. So I call this guy Hufflepuff because he always huffs and he puffs and he throws his head around, but he never opens his mouth. He's going to throw his head around and act like he's going to bite, but his mouth will never open. He only opens his mouth to eat. Now, another neat thing, another neat thing about this lizard, shh, 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 shh. another neat thing about this lizard, he has a very long tail. From my left hand down is tail. What does he use that tail for? Raise your hand. What do you think? Shh. What do you think? Well, we'll get questions at the end. What do you think? Okay, he can use it when he's crawling around to move. For balance, maybe? He's got a special use for it, though. Maybe. Raise your hand if you've ever seen a little blue-tailed lizard, a, a blue-tailed skink. If you try to catch those, what do they do with their tail? It breaks off, and it sits there, and it wiggles around, and you're going, cool, the tail's wiggling. Where does that lizard go? He pulls a magic trick. Poof, he disappears, right? He runs away and he hides and he grows his tail back and that tail he uses to protect him to save his life. This guy does the same thing. But is his tail blue? No, it's got to do something else to get that predator's attention. So if a predator comes after it, it falls off, it breaks into a bunch of little pieces and it squirts blood everywhere. So we're going to try it right here. I'm not going to... So. That blood that comes out of that tail kicks in that predator's feeding response. It sees the blood, it smells the blood, and he's like, okay, he's hurt, he's dead, I'm going to go ahead and eat him. And the lizard will crawl away and grow a new tail. This guy has never lost his tail. He still has a perfect tail. If, it, if he'd have lost it, it would be a different color. It wouldn't be nice and pointy and long like this. It'd be a little shorter and blunt. But this guy has never been in the wild. He's been in captivity his entire life. Um, we treat him like you do a dog pretty much. Give him all the food he wants, all the water he wants. He gets exercise, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> so, now, the next animal, is a little different. This guy actually has legs. Just a minute, just a minute. Now, shh, you all thought that guy was a snake, right? Now everybody said he's a turtle. He's not. Just a minute. This is a tortoise. This is actually the largest mainland tortoise in the world. Right now, this guy is a baby. He's about eight years old and he weighs between six or seven pounds. So if he's eight pounds, six, eight years and seven pounds, and he's a baby, how big do you think he gets? He will get to weigh as much as I weigh. I weigh 180 pounds. This turtle can grow larger than me. Their average weight's 150 to 200 pounds. So for him to get that big and to weigh that much, what does he have to do? Drink. Drink? He's never had a drink of water. He's never had water in his cage. He gets all of his water from the food he eats. This guy does not like water. Turtles we have around here, do they like water? Yes, they like to swim. This guy swims like a rock. 
I put him in there and he swam straight to the bottom. So he does not like water. Someone else over here said eat. He eats all day long. In the wild, he's like a horse. He walks around and he grazes on grass all day long. So eating gets him the food and the nutrients he needs to get big. He has to do something else. How long does it take you to, get a, to be full grown? 20, 25 years and you're considered full grown? You're considered an adult at 18, but you, you still grow a little bit, right? It takes him a lot longer. The average lifespan of a human is 75 to 80 years. He will live twice that. The oldest one on record was 232 years old. So, I have him as a baby at eight. My children will have him as a pet. Their children will have him as a pet. Their children will have him as a pet. He could go through seven generations of my family, but he won't. Once he gets so big, he will go to a zoo or a uh, nature preserve or somewhere that can handle something that big. If I have a 100-pound tortoise in my house, I won't have walls. <laughs> when this guy's full grown and I put him outside, he will walk through a chain link fence. Oh my God. If you have a Honda Civic and it's in his way, he will not walk around it. He will push it and keep on going. 200-pound tortoise is about the size of a kiddie pool, only a little bit taller. So these guys get very large, very strong. Anybody in here, when he's full grown, could get on him and ride him to the grocery store, and he wouldn't even care you were there. It might take you a while to get there, especially if you're like me and you live 12 miles away from the grocery store. It might take you a week or two, but you'll make it eventually. He doesn't get tired. Just take a little tent, put it on his back, sleep on his back while he goes, right? Now, since we don't have tortoises around here, we have turtles. Let's talk a little bit about turtles. Where do, where do turtles live? In the, in the water. They like water. And also on land. Who knows? Raise your hand for this one. Who knows what the Tennessee State reptile is? Eastern box turtle. That is the only turtle in Tennessee that does not swim. It spends most of its time on grass or in forests. It, it'll wade. And you are going to the bathroom on me. That's why he wears a diaper. Um, so, speaking of that, do y'all ever see turtles crossing the road? So if a turtle's crossing the road and you want to save its life, you want to pick it up and move it, which way do you move it? The way it's going. So if he's going this way, you move him this way. If you'd move him this direction, he's like your teenagers. He's stubborn. He's going to turn around. He's going to go back the way he was going. Another word of advice, if you pick up a turtle, do not pick him up like this. If you pick up a wild turtle and you scare him, his defense is to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so if you're holding him like this and he goes to the bathroom, where does it go? All over your pants and your shoes. Now, I learned this the hard way. Always pick him up sideways. When they go to the bathroom, they go this way. Unless you have a friend with you. And then pick him up this way. And then when he goes to the bathroom, he goes on your friend. <laughs> so, does he feel me touching his shell? Yes. No? Yes. He does. What covers his shell? Wait. What covers your body? Skin. skin. Can you feel stuff touching your skin? Yeah. Yes. He can feel stuff touching his skin. Now, it's not as sensitive as like your arms and stuff. He doesn't have stuff biting it because he doesn't have all that meat underneath. But he can feel stuff touching his skin. So should you hit him with a rock? No. no. Should you hit him with a stick? No. no. Should you turn him on their back and watch your legs flop around? His legs don't flop around anymore. He's used to it. Um, now, shh, shh, shh. I've got... My hands are full, sorry. Um, I've got three more animals. The next one is the newest animal we have. And he's one of my favorite. This is one of the animals I've wanted to work with for a very long time. And I finally talked the owner, the boss, into buying one. It's one of the pluses for working for a company. He buys all the animals, I get to play with them. Shh, shh, shh. 
Now, of all the animals I have, he is probably the hardest one to get in and out of his cage. Now, if you like lizards, this is arguably one of the coolest lizards in the world. He's a lizard. He's got everything lizards have, but he's a lot different than most lizards. Raise your hand if you can tell me one thing special about chameleons. What do you think? He can change colors. As I walk around, shh, he may change a little bit, but have you all seen the paint commercials where he steps on pink and he turns pink and he steps on purple and turns purple? Can they do that? Yeah. Not quite. They can go all kinds of different colors, but not as fast or as, as uh, bright as, the, as some of those colors. Um, right now, he looks a little skinny, but usually when you scare him, that's when he gets to look like a real chameleon. He puffs up real big. His colors can change. This bright green on here, the dark, it'll stay usually a dark green. Everything around it can get brown if he's too cold, wants to absorb more heat. Um, it can get real light if he's too hot. Um, if he gets scared, it can darken up some. If he gets excited, he'll get real bright. So I tried to put him on my shirt and see if he turned blue. He would not. Um, I'm a huge Kentucky fan, so if I could get a blue lizard, I'd just have him on a blue stick and all the time he'd stay blue. doesn't work that way. So what's another neat thing about chameleons? What do you think? They are excellent at camouflage. What do you think? Yes. If you watch his eyes, his eyes move independent of one another. So if you look at something, your eyes go the same direction. Right now, he's got one eye looking at me, and this eye is probably looking at a little boy or little girl over here. He, it's like if you had... Um, like toilet paper rolls, you put one on each eye and you moved them like this. Could you see out of each one? You, a little bit, but it'd be hard for you to focus on that stuff. He can look two completely different directions. And it's designed so that he, he can look 360 degrees around his body. So one eye can be looking directly back at me and the other eye is looking directly in front of him and he can see all around him. He can see backwards. What's he can also see predators. What's another neat thing about chameleons? What do you think? That he can curl his tail. His tail he uses when he's climbing in the trees to hold on and for balance. How does he eat? Or what does he eat? He eats flies, bugs, insects. What does he use? His tongue. His tongue. Very long. If I had a cricket and I put it on my elbow, he could eat that cricket without ever moving from my fingers. He has a very long, sticky tongue. Y'all ever go to the quarter machines and get those little hands that are sticky and you can flip them out and grab stuff? That's what his tongue is like. My boys used to love those. They tried to see who could leave the most fingerprints on my uh, glasses with them. They usually just grab the glasses and pull them off and they get in trouble. But. Now, another neat thing about these guys, their feet, are a little different. Most lizards or animals have like five toes or something like that. He still has five toes, but his are fused together. So it looks like he only has two. He has two that go to the front and three that go to the back so that he can grab on to those sticks and hold on very, very easily. And he has very powerful feet. If I put him on my pinky, he can put my pinky to sleep. That's why I keep him up on the bigger fingers. He can't get enough grip to to make them go numb and turn purple. Now, his, yeah, he, when he's not wrapping it around something, he uses it for balance. Like, so if I put my finger there, yeah, he would curl it up. So, now, these guys um, can live in lots of different habitats. Uh, the veiled chameleon, like he is, likes it nice and hot and warm and wet. So where does he live? In the rainforest. In the rainforest. Very good.
There are chameleons, though, that like it hot and dry. Where do they live? Desert. In deserts. So this guy's pretty cool. He's got spikes going all the way down his back. He gets comfortable and he deflates. And then on his belly, he's also got spikes that go all the way down his belly. So now I've got two more animals. And when I put him in, I gotta make sure his food doesn't get out. I'm pretty sure the librarians don't want crickets everywhere. <laughs> like that one right there. Go. 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 No, you have to turn loose all four fingers. <laughs> okay. Turn loose to the last one. That one hurts. Thank you. His name is Rango. Now, my next, my next two animals are the largest. Uh, they get a little uh, nervous, I, I'll say. Um, the next one, though, is, is more of a cuddle buddy. So if I hold him to where y'all can see him, he doesn't like it. If I put him on my shoulder and he can cuddle, he's great. And most people wouldn't expect this animal to be a cuddle buddy, so. <laughs> Just a minute. He's used to that. Every time I get him out, that's the reaction. So this is the largest species of lizard in North or South America. This is a Argentine black and white tegu, and he's a young one right now. When he's full grown, he'll be over four feet long and can weigh like 25 to 30 pounds. Now right now, his skin is falling off. That's the question I was going to ask. Why is his skin fall off? He's getting new skin. It is the same as molting, but in reptiles they call it shedding. So his skin, I can just grab and pull chunks off. And if you look at his back, his back and his sides are nice and bright, black and white. But then if you look at his tail, his tail's sort of a dull brown. His tail hasn't shed completely yet, but his back has. Now, all reptiles shed. Let me lay this down before I drop it. Why do reptiles shed? What do you think? Get new skin, why do they need it? Did y'all hear what she said? She said because they grow and their skin doesn't grow with them. So his skin will stay this size as he gets bigger. When he gets bigger, the skin gets too small. And then he's got to get new skin, so he grows new skin and gets rid of the old stuff. Does that sound like anything we have? What is covering the outside of your body right now? Nope, outside your skin. Clothes. As you get bigger, do those clothes still fit you? No, they get too small, they get too tight, and you got to get new ones. His skin's the same way. Now, that being said, do you shed? Yes, no. When you brush your hair, what's left in your hairbrush? Hair. So you shed just like a dog, right? How about. Have you ever been asked to dust your bedroom? Or dust the living room? You seen dust on stuff? That dust is made out of dead skin cells. Right now, shh, 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 right now, everybody in this room is shedding their skin. Your skin is constantly falling off and constantly regrowing. His does it all at one time. Now, if you have a snake, when a snake sheds, they start at the nose, work all the way down to the tail. 
Lizards can't do that. He's got all this extra skin. He's got these funny looking feet with his really long toes. So those have to shed off in little chunks. Now, yeah, okay. He's dropping pieces. This is where he wants to be. He's more like a cat than he is a lizard. He wants to be on my shoulder, snuggling up. Why do you think he wants to be close to my body? What do you think? Because it's comfortable? I didn't hear you. Because it's nice and warm. Why do reptiles like warm places? We'll go over here. What do you think? Nope, you got it backwards. They're cold-blooded animals. Cold-blooded animals have to use the environment around them to maintain their heat, their body temperature. So when he gets cold, he has to find somewhere warm. When he gets hot, he's got to find somewhere cold. Right now, it's a little cold in here for him, so he wants to be against my body, he's absorbing that energy so he can get up and move around and go eat. These guys are omnivores. They will eat anything you eat. If I go home and fix myself a piece of pizza, he will eat that piece of pizza. If we're having spaghetti and meatballs, he will eat spaghetti and meatballs. Now, it's not healthy for him, so we have to feed him natural stuff. So he gets a lot of like boiled eggs and ground turkey, mice. He loves bananas. Um, well, she asked if he's good to have at home to eat all the mice. If you can stand him running around your house, yes. Now, he is considered to be one of the smartest species of lizard in the world. I have a harness I put on him and I walk him just like you do your dog. Very intelligent animals. We have a larger one and about three, four years ago, he got out of his cage. He opened it, slid the glass and he was gone. We looked for him for about six hours. The only way we found him we looked outside, the kangaroo was at the kangaroo pen going, and then looking at us. And then he'd look underneath the pen, and he'd look at us. We didn't find the lizard. The kangaroo found the lizard. These guys love dirt. They like mud. So underneath that kangaroo pen, there's no grass. It's a lot of dirt and a lot of dust. He was under there rolling around. So raise your hand if you like to get dirty. When I was your age, my dad had a pond. I walked out of that pond one day, I was covered in mud from head to toe, which was pretty cool until you get in the sunlight and it starts to dry and it, it hurts when it all comes off. These guys do the same thing, but we do it because it's fun. Why do you think he rolls in the mud? Because it's fun. Not for fun. What do you think? Okay, it could be sunscreen. It could keep him from getting burnt. Same basic reason. If you go into the woods and you get a tick on you, what do you do? You go, someone pulls it off, right? If you get poison ivy or something, you get medicine to put on it. Can he go to the doctor and get medicine? No. No. So he gets in the mud and rolls around. It gets all those mites and stuff off of him. It gets him protection against more mites getting on him, and it keeps him clean. He can roll and get all this extra skin that's on him right now that he's having issues get off. That mud will get all that stuff off for him. Now, real quick, one more animal. Now, this animal is the one that gets nervous, shh, shh, shh. does not like movement. So, come on. <laughs> now, just a minute. This animal. This is his first year programming. He's about a year and a half old. 
he's still getting used to being in crowds. So he likes to smack me in the side of the head. But this is a Harris Hawk. This is the... Stop. This is the only animal I have with me today that is native to the United States. This is a hawk from the desert southwest. <clears throat> now, do we have hawks around here? Yes. yes. Do we have hawks that look like this around here? Maybe a little bit, but he's a little different than the hawks we have. The hawks we have have much shorter legs. Why does he have to have long legs? Very good. Are there trees in the desert? No. She said in the desert there are cactus, and he has to perch on those cactus. And those cactus have little spines coming up, right? So those spines sticking up, those long legs allow him to perch on that cactus without those spines poking him in the belly. <clears throat> it's, which would pretty much hurt. He also hunts a little different than the birds we have around here. Birds we have around here, one bird will go out, catch something, take it back to the nest. Shh, 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 shh. These guys hunt like wolves. So they'll take the young ones like him, and he'll go into the thickets, and they'll scare out the rabbits and the squirrels and stuff, and the larger birds will be flying around on the outside of the thicket, and they'll catch those animals, and then they share the food. So he's a pretty, pretty cool little bird. Now, how much do y'all think he weighs? Yeah. If you had a cat this big, how much would it weigh? Five, ten, eight pounds? He weighs less than two pounds. Now, why can he look this big and weigh so little? If you look, that much on his head is feathers. So if I could go that much all the way around his head, his head is about the size of my thumb. Very, very small animals under here. Their feathers make them look a lot bigger than they actually are. 